Hello CLI Magic followers. Welcome to another CLI Magic video. So on uh, Sunday, September 21st, I posted this command which output the text to the movie uh, Star Wars Episode 4, the uh, title text that goes in the background. So if you run it, you get this. <laughs> which, you know, you're like, wow. Where'd that come from? Well, it came from reverse DNS info. So a lot of times when this command gets posted, it doesn't get posted using reverse DNS directly. Usually it'll get posted with this traceroute command. But traceroute, and I've posted this before, uh, I think there's even a host name that you can traceroute to uh, to get this started. And basically the person who created this, they have access to an entire class C block on the internet where they can control the reverse DNS. And then they have a special program that can direct you, uh, your trace route to go from one IP to the next. Uh, the thing is, is that a lot of people, when they try to run trace route, they run to issues where their provider doesn't allow trace route. Uh, you also have to increase the default number of trace route hops that the program will do. So it just kind of becomes a mess and trying to explain to people how to get to work is troublesome. So I thought uh, more, uh, so thanks Rubre for post, uh, for saying this my way, um, but I decided to try a little, something a little bit different. So the first thing I thought was, well, let me look at the, uh, let me look at that IP block using a for loop and I'll just look at the first 200 addresses and basically do a reverse DNS lookup on each of those addresses from one to 200 and see what output I get. And so you get quite a, you know, pretty much one piece of text per IP. So we'll cancel that there and just kind of look at the pattern. So you'll see that there's a lot more here, not just episode four, but episode five, Empire Strikes Back, and episode six, Re Revenge of the Jedi. That's what the movie originally was called. Uh, they changed the name to Return of the, uh, of the Jedi because they figured that that was a, a more positive, uplifting name, I guess. Um, so, the, the numbers are kind of funky. They're not sequential, which makes which would make it difficult for me to post this just using like a bracket expansion of numbers. So it goes one and then six and then nine and 14. And this seems kind of, you know, hodgepodge all over the place at first until you realize it's, oh, one, okay. So that's five and then three and then another five, and then another three, and then yeah, another five. So it goes five, you know, it goes five, three, five, three, five, three, over and over until the end. So how am I going to generate that sequence? Um, normally, sequence. Uh, the SEQ command, which stands for sequence, uh, if if you just give it one argument, it'll spit out from one to that argument. If you give it from uh, first number and a second number, it'll give you from that number to the top number. You can also give it a interval. So if you say five in between, it'll count up by fives. It'll just give you 180, 185, 190, 195, 200, and so on. So how could I use this? Um, there's no way to say increment by five and then increment by three. So I thought, well, wait a second. I can put two sequence. Uh, I could I could do something like use a while loop or use, you know, Perl or awk or something to generate the sequence and, and just program programmatically say add five, then add three, then add five. Or I could do this thing where I use, I add three and five to get eight, which is the total interval of, um, of the pattern. And then I shift it. So I have 
one that starts at one and then one that starts at six and they both increment by um, eight and then I put both of those into a subshell so that the output of them can be both piped into sort dash n and you'll, if you look at the output of this you'll see that overall it generates my pattern that I need one six nine fourteen so it's five three five three five three and so on which is exactly what I need so it was a I, you know, I thought this was kind of a clever way to, and more interesting way to actually uh, run this command. And this, you know, this kind of thing could be useful for other purposes where you have kind of an odd type of sequence going. You just have to look at the overall interval. And, you know, if you have three different in interval numbers, you can, um, that alternate back and forth, you could just add a third sequence and then sort them. So then I pass into xargs, and xargs is a way of running, you know, taking the input and then running one command for every uh, line of input, in this case, uh, that I send to it. You can, you don't have to say one, but dig can only take one argument at a time. Um, otherwise, it interprets the rest of the arguments as, as name servers that you want to check against. So... Right, so the dash capital I, this means I want to use the curly braces to uh, substitute every number here into the command. So I say dig plus short, and that means don't output the full output that dig normally outputs, just give me the answer. And then dash X means reverse, so give me the reverse uh, DNS information and here's where I substitute I substitute in the last number and then that gives me what I want so it's kind of a I thought it was a neat way to do it you could put in other numbers if you wanted to you know if you if you found a different text that you want to start with um, you know you could do whatever you want Okay, well, thanks for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to leave comments below. Let me know what other uh, videos you might like to see in the future, and I'll try to make them. Thanks for watching.